Improvised home sled. Sleds are great for rehabbing and strengthening the knees. This improvised home sled is inspired by Knees Over Toes Guy, Mr. Infinity, and the Athletic Truth Group. I've used a reusable shopping bag, a weighted vest, ankle weights, a kettlebell, and two resistance bands as a harness. Push-pull plank. The push-pull plank works the shoulders, chest, abs, and triceps. Having to redistribute your weight to maintain balance and stability builds on proprioceptive awareness too. Resistance band knee drives. I can confirm enthusiastically that strengthening the hip flexors can help with lower back issues and that's exactly what these resistance band knee drives have done for me. Bowling ball step. The bowling ball step is inspired by every goddamn Dre and Bill Mader. Note that you don't lunge back, but you step back onto your forefoot. The main muscles work to the quads and glutes but the small stabilizer muscles of the feet, shin and calves get a good workout too. Uneven tea towel pull-ups. With uneven tea towel pull-ups, having one arm lower than the other forces your grip, which really works your forearms and biceps, and of course your back too. Try to get your chin over the bar, hollow your body out at the top, and briefly pause to add even more intensity. Matador Kettlebell Swing Similarly to the classic kettlebell swing, the muscles worked in the Matador Kettlebell Swing are the hamstrings, quads, glutes, spinal erectors, upper back, shoulders and abs. However, they're hit slightly differently. And unlike the kettlebell swing, you stop shy at the top of the hip extension to give enough time to shuffle and adjust your legs. This was inspired by a much smoother single arm move I'd seen Dana Dane the goat do. Double-handed kettlebell Z press. Being seated rather than standing, you'll find that more shoulder muscles are engaged in the double-handed kettlebell Z press. And as your back can't support the weight like it can in the standing version, your core is fully activated, especially if your feet are close together. Toe squats. Maintaining balance and ankle and knee stability is especially important as we get older. Toe squats are time efficient in that they allow you to work the stabilizer muscles of the feet and knee, and simultaneously the larger lower body muscles. Plank resistance band rows. The primary muscles worked in the plank resistance band rows are the lats, biceps, core and shoulders. Holding the plank position properly so you don't collapse at the lower back also hits the quads and glutes. Kettlebell tea towel upright row. With the kettlebell tea towel upright row, you bend slightly at the waist and as you lift the weight, you pull the tea towel out. Unlike the classic barbell version, this variation tends to put less strain on the shoulders and wrists. High low lateral lunge. Not that you can tell from my greyhound licking legs, but I actually prioritize lower body training. And that's because more natural growth hormones are released when you do glute, quad and hamstring work. This high-low lateral lunge was inspired by Flip Mode Knight, aka Melvin James. I'd seen him do a double high rack version and a single low hold version. Resistance band armpit rows. Armpit rows are another gentler on the joints alternative to the classic upright row. Using a resistance band to do them increases time under tension, giving your shoulders a pretty good workout. The band I'm standing on is a little short, so I've added gymnastic rings, which also help with grip. Try to pull high, but at a level that allows you to briefly pause. <laughs>